Hello friends, welcome to SourceCat tutorial. I hope you like my previous videos. And if you do like them, then subscribe to my channel. There's a lot more to come. In this tutorial, we will look at draw tools. The three draw tools basically are rectangle and polygon. This video tutorial is part three in our draw command. So let's start with our tool. Now here you will find a small arrow. Okay. Below this arc tool, once you click on this, you will find 11 different options with which we can draw this arc. But here we will only see the options which we frequently use while drawing arc. So the first option is three point option. First let me tell you what an arc is. A arc is a segment of circle that has been cut. So an arc would be a major arc or a minor arc. A minor arc would be an arc with lower circumference and the major arc will be an arc containing bigger value of circumference. So if it's a semicircle, there is no question of major or minor arc. So we'll start making an arc using this option three point. Click on this. Now you have to specify three points for drawing arc. So here, the first point, second, and the third point. Now, as an example, I'll make a rectangle first and make this three point arc. Click here, then here, and here. And here's your arc. Now, let's go to other options. The start, center, and end option. For that, you have to click on start point, then the center point of the arc. And now the arc will be drawn in anti clockwise direction like this. You can stop this arc at any angle or at any point you like. For that, click anywhere on the screen, and here is your arc. Now, after looking at these two options, Let's look at this option, start and direction. This one is also very frequently used. For that, you have to click on the start point and an end point. And here is our arc. Now, it's asking for direction. And direction means the line which you can see here, which is tangential to the starting point of arc. We have to specify angle for this. So, let's specify an angle of minus 45 degrees. And here it is. If you cannot understand this, let's make it once again. Start and end direction. In this case, here is a start point, end point, and now see this direction. Now, I will give a direction of 120 degrees and see this up. So, the line which was joining this point and this ray and was tangent at this arc is making an angle of 120 degree with the x axis. Now, let's look at other options which we use here, start and then radius. For that, you have to specify a start point, an end point, and the radius. So, in this case, I am providing a radius of say 10 units, and here is our arc. I will illustrate this with an example of rectangle. Let's make a rectangle. Now, go to this start and radius arc. Click on this point as the starting point. Now this end point and enter radius of 10 units. As soon as you enter a radius of 10 units, you will find this arc in this direction. Because this was our first point. If we reverse the direction of our point selection, then the arc will be drawn in opposite direction. Because drawing of arc always follows anti-clockwise convention. Since it was our first point, so it will follow this anti-clockwise movement and it will draw arc in this way. So let's go to arc again, start and radius. This time we will select this point as our first point. Then ending point and our radius of 10 units. Now the arc will be drawn in this direction. So by selecting starting and ending points of the arc, 
we can specify the direction in which arc will be drawn. Now, let's look at other option, center, start and end. For that, first click on the center, then the starting point and the end point of arc. Something like this. Okay, click and here's your arc. There is a special type of arc R, which you will see here. Continue. Once you click on this, you will find that an R will be drawn which is tangent to the element which we have drawn previously. Previously I have drawn this arc, so this arc is tangent to this arc at this point. If we have a drawing like line here, then on selecting this option, this arc will be tangent to this line at this point. This was our arc command. Let's now move on to rectangle. Here we'll find rectangle. For drawing rectangles, you can select many options, but we'll discuss some of the famous options, most popular ones which are used. First, click anywhere on the screen which you want to specify as first corner point. Make the rule of thumb to always follow this command line. What has been asked in command lines is you have to enter that value. So now it's asking for our another corner point. For specifying another corner point, I will use coordinate convention and enter a value with the at the rate symbol. At the rate 10, 5. Now once you enter this value at the rate 10, 5, AutoCAD will assume 10 to be the length of this rectangle and 5 as its width. Now press enter. And here is your rectangle with length 10 and width 5 units. You can do this in another way as well. Click on this dynamic input DYN. If you can't find this symbol, use icons. You might have icons like this. Right click on any icon and click on use icons. Now you'll find all your icons here and make it on. Now go to rectangle, click anywhere on the screen. Now specify its length 10 and press tab. And now specify width and press enter. Now we have a rectangle with length 10 unit and width 5 units. Let's look at other options which appear while we draw a rectangle. Now you can turn it off dyn then I can put. Here we have many other options. So let's look at them. If you're familiar with chamfer, fillet, then you'll be able to know what chamfer and fillet is. We'll discuss it in later video tutorials. But first, I will give you a glimpse of this. Let's click on chamfer and enter a chamfer value of one unit for first distance and second distance also one unit. Now click on screen and draw a rectangle. Now you'll find that this rectangle will be made with its edges chamfered and the distance of chamfer is one unit on both sides as we have specified. Now let's go to rectangle and change this chamfer value to 0 and 0 again. Now next option is elevation. Click on this elevation and enter an elevation value of 5 units and make this rectangle. When you look at it first you won't find any difference. But there is a difference. Click on this home icon. Now, we are in 3D view. In 3D view, when you will look at this rectangle, then you will find that it's not drawn on XY plane. Its height from XY plane is 5 units, as we have mentioned in our elevation. So that is what elevation does. We will learn more about it when we will explore our 3D concepts. For now, let's delete it and change elevation value to 0. Now, let's select fillet. In fillet, let's enter a value of 1 unit and make a rectangle. Now you will see that a rectangle with its edges rounded, that means edges filleted, will be drawn like this. And the radius of this fillet is 1 unit as we have specified. Go to rectangle again. And use thickness. This time we 
we will enter thickness value of one unit and make a rectangle like this. Since we have not turned this fillet value off, it's still making rectangles with fillet of one unit. Now let's go to 3D view again and there it is. You will find rectangle like this with a thickness of one unit. Once you close, uh, once you change this view, you will find it as a surface, but it's not surface, it's actually polyline. Click back to 2D wireframe. Here you have the geometry. Click on this and change these values to normal again and thickness value to zero. The last option is width. Let's look at it. Click on this rectangle. Now change its width to 0.5 units and make a rectangle. Now this rectangle will be drawn with its edges with its side of thickness 0.5 units. So we have explored all the options here in rectangle but yet there is still a few more options. Once you click on this you will find these three options here. The first option is area. Click on this area and here you will find area. Enter. Once you enter, a rectangle will be drawn with area equal to 100 units as specified here. Now either you can select length or width. Once you enter length, then the width will automatically be calculated based upon your area input. And if you enter width, it length will be calculated and vice versa. So in this case, I am entering the value of length. So press enter and enter the value of 10 units. So obviously the width will be of 10 units and we will get a square of 10 and 10 units. Now let's change this width value to 0. Click on this. We have seen area. Now let's look at rotation. Click on rotation and now you can make a rectangle rotated at certain angle. Right now I am entering a rotation value of 30 degrees and here is a rectangle rotated at 30 degrees. Now you can enter dimensions. So let's select dimensions. Dimensions. And now specify length of whatever unit. Right now I am specifying a length of 10 units and a width of 5 units. And here is a rectangle with length 10 and width 5 units. Now you can specify which quadrant you want to keep this rectangle. So I want to keep it here. Click it. I hope. You have learned about rectangle well. Now let's move on to polygon. But before moving to polygon, let's look at this image. Here we have two images. You can say two pentagons. So pentagon is a polygon and you must be knowing about polygon. A polygon is any closed geometry made up with lines which is closed and obviously it may have minimum of 3 and a maximum of, of infinite number of lines. But in AutoCAD, you can draw a polygon with a minimum of 3 and a maximum of 1024 sides. Now, let's look at these two images. Here you will find two polygon inscribed in a circle and second one circumscribed about circle. This polygon is inside a circle. That is why it has been called inscribed and this one is outside a circle. The basic difference is, in this case, the edges of polygon touches this circle and in this case, the center of this polygon, the center of this polygon is touching the circle. The center of its edges is touching the circle. Now, the point joining center of the circle and the edge of this polygon makes the radius and in this case center of circle joining the center point of this side is making this radius. I am telling you this because we are going to use it in making polygons. So let's go to polygon. First AutoCAD will ask you about number of sides you want to make. So let's enter 7. We are making a heptagon. Now specify center, click anywhere on the screen and that will be your center. Now here comes the inscribed and circumscribed. So basically it's asking me which type of polygon I want to make. This or this. If I'll make this polygon, it will be created inside a circle. If circumscribed, it will be created outside a circle. 
so let's select inscribe in first case so inscribe and now see this we have our polygon with this crosshair touching at vertex as i've shown here in this image like this so click anywhere on screen or enter a radius value five units or any value you like this is our inscribed polygon let's make a circumscribed polygon with equal number of side seven now here is the center and this time we'll select circumscribed and now you can see the difference this crosshair is touching center of this vertex as i have mentioned in this diagram now you can see the difference here so again i am entering a value of five unit as radius simply you can see the difference this polygon is shorter in length and this one is bigger just because circle both circles five unit radius are drawn at different places in this case the circle is drawn outside and in, in this case the circle is inside what if you want to make a polygon with sides on uh, with sides of known value for example if you want to make a pentagon with each edge of length 5 unit for that we will have a different option let's first select number of sides as 5 now here you will find edge option click on edge click anywhere on screen from where you start to draw your polygon and now you can see that this cursor is tracing the central line this line now enter the value of your edge that is 5 units and press enter now you will have this pentagon with each edges with length 5 units thank you guys for watching have a nice day